Hi, this is Jennifer Dono. I am with YoungFemaleEntrepreneurs.com and you're watching Young Female Entrepreneurs, the live stream that happens every Thursday. This evening, you're probably watching live at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. But next Thursday, we're actually going to switch it up a little bit and take it down to the 11 a.m. time for Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm just going to try and switch up things to see if entrepreneurs, young female entrepreneurs would rather watch during the day while you're eating lunch or... Um, trying to respond to emails, that kind of fun thing before, um, rather than doing it at dinner time or at during the office, or I don't even know what's on on Thursday nights anymore. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so we've done it every Thursday now, starting at the very beginning of March. And on this episode, we have Molly Mayhar of Stratajoy.com on. And if we're able to, um, hopefully get in a couple more of our guests. Uh, which I'm on the live chat and you guys look like you're definitely chatting away over there but we're missing one other one Nicole Antoinette um, of NicoleIsBetter.com she was supposed to be on tonight and we're sending her many many well wishes this evening she's not feeling very well so we'll talk to Molly a little bit about Nicole because she knows her on a personal level so it'll be fun uh, to hear um, more about what she's doing. I just downloaded her app, actually, Nicole's app, um, Papered, so it'll be fun to hear more about that. Eventually, we'll have her back on the show for sure. Um, but Molly of Stratajoy, I've been following for some time. She used to be out in the Seattle area, so I've had the great privilege of seeing her in person. She's incredible, so inspiring. I actually took one of my girlfriends to her workshop a couple years ago, and it was so funny because at the time, uh, she had never really thought about the idea of the quarter-life crisis and positivity and all that goes into living your life out to the fullest and I swear that workshop changed her mindset in a lot of different ways and she ended up going through a little bit of a mini life crisis <laughs> after that <laughs> Molly's on in the green room saying uh, that she started the crisis but no that's not the case um, there's definitely outside influences so again I'm waiting on for that other guest to show up um well, she's definitely, I don't want to say that she's late or anything like that. We're just having Google Hangout issues. We usually use Skype, and I've got Skype on in the background. So if any of you that are on the chat for the live stream, um, if you want to call in and ask Molly questions later, I will definitely be taking them. Um, I'll open up the line by just saying, basically, if you'd like to Skype in, call in, and we'll have you back on the TV behind me. Um, if you're brave enough, if you've got makeup on, maybe you have your wine glass. It's totally cool. If you don't, though, whatever. Um... But before we get started and I invite Molly on, I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple fun things that are happening around young female entrepreneurs. The first one is that we've got the YFE book club coming up. And our first book is Craving Success. And I've got a couple moderators that have already read the book through. And they were just so excited. They sent me questions right off the bat, said that they loved everything that Melody has to say. Melody Berenger is the author. She is also the founder of The Crave Company, which started here in Seattle. Um, and I know Molly has some experience with Melody, and it'll be fun to hear more from her. Uh, but uh, the Crave book or Craving Success is all about um, some of Melody's failures. I don't want to necessarily say failures, but definitely life lessons. And that's something that we as young female entrepreneurs um, could definitely benefit from. So we're going to be reading that book starting on April 23rd. Go to books.yfe.me. I have a screenshot, too, of the um of the site too so if you can go over there sign up we're doing it over a facebook group and the yfe blog so it'll be a really fun participation cool kids thing like that um so the next thing is uh the twitter chats i have some fun stuff coming up in uh april and may and uh i'm going to be posting that onto the blog and through our email list on monday and then i've got a really cool uh guest blog too for that but anyway that's enough about YFE. <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and invite Molly Mayhar of Stratajoy.com on. Uh, thank you so much, Molly, for being on the show. I so appreciate it. Goodness gracious, I love this girl, so I'm so excited to have her on. <laughs> Let me adjust. Sorry, Molly, I had everything up. Okay, perfect. Oh. Hello, Molly. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone that's watching? I'm happy to. Uh, and I'm happy to be here, Jen. Thanks for inviting me. And look, I got a solo show or something. I know. <laughs> I feel special. <laughs> uh, as, as Jen said, I'm Molly Mayhar from Stratajoy.com, and I run a coaching and training company that really focuses on empowering women to live life on their own terms, their own definition of success, whatever that may be. It's probably not going to be mine, so 
that's kind of on you to get that sorted out. But Strategy is full of inspiration, resources, tools, and camaraderie, probably most of all, to help you do that. It kind of started off on this idea of the quarter life crisis, right? That meltdown that you have mm, somewhere between 23 and 31 <laughs> about what you actually want to be doing with your life, whether that's personally or professionally. And having a place to go where you can get um, help or inspiration or hear stories and know you're not alone in that feeling. And that's how it started. It's grown from there. We've got offshoots um, of entrepreneurs that were in developing more products and, and groups for. The next piece, I think, is going to be Mamas because um, I, I know I'm eight <laughs> months pregnant right now. Eight months pregnant. Did you know you're really pregnant for 10 months? Yeah. Wait, isn't that weird? Why? I don't understand that. Yeah. Anyway, I'm doing a couple months and I can tell that is going to feel lonely and scary and overwhelming as well, which means we need a strategy community for it. I love it. Can Am I able to ask for a belly shot this early on oh, in, the, oh, in no, the show? Oh, no, we're good. I'm used to the belly shots. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get tilted down. Oh, my goodness. There we go. <laughs> 360 or 180. Oh my goodness. Congratulations on all of that. I, I think the last time I saw Molly was when, um, I don't think you were even married. Um, it's been a while, I feel like. I think I might have been pregnant then. <laughs> I think you were pregnant. That's I think funny. you were pregnant. <laughs> but anyway, keep going. So you're, you are planning on doing um, a mommy strategy community. Um, but why don't you tell us, you've recently had a pretty big accomplishment um, as far as being the blog side of strategy. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, accolades. Woohoo, gold stars. Love them. Um, Yes, I was in Big Sky, Montana with my folks, and I woke up one morning, and I honestly, I have to tell you, I was feeling pretty pouty about Strategy, and I've just been whining to my parents. Um, I, I don't even know what about. <laughs> and I wake up, and I jump on Twitter or whatever, and someone's like, hey, congratulations. I'm like, on what? And they're like, <laughs> oh, pro blogger, top 20 bloggers to watch in 2012, which was such a compliment to be surrounded by some of the people that I was surrounded with was very, very cool. And it also made me laugh because I don't necessarily consider myself a blogger. I mean, I have a blog in support of Strategy, but I always think of myself as a teacher or a coach. So it was very cool though to get recognized in that way because as if anyone's been over to Strategy, you know that the blog is not me. It's me plus amazing women telling their stories in real time for what we call seasons. So we'll feature seven women for about five to six months, kind of about their stories, about their version of the quarter life crisis. And obviously this means we'll be rolling out new bloggers in a probably a different feed or perhaps a different site, um, telling stories of their mama journey. So, but that was very cool to be recognized in that way. And I had no idea it was coming. They don't tell you these things. They just post. Wow, I would have thought they they would have, because I'm sure you got a huge amount of traffic from that, too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I didn't say it was all great quality traffic, right? Because I'm speaking to a pretty specific um, mindset and demographic. So, you know, all the men social media bloggers are like, yeah, mm, pink, girly stuff. This isn't for me. <laughs> yeah, well, also so fun. what made you actually think of doing that season piece? Because, I mean, I feel like all bloggers dream about having that, um, being able to them. hand over the responsibility of blogging. <laughs> so what made you actually, because you have a very successful guest blogging program. What made, yeah, what was the... I do. Uh, you know, it honestly started, well, this is crazy, but it been going on for three years like when this season wraps season six that will have been three years 33 women which and they're always close to me like I keep up with everybody so um but it started because truly I was moving out of my real acute quarter life crisis like I had done the work to figure out who I wanted to be in the world and what that was going to look like work-wise what that was going to look like in my personal life and I was starting to more identify with being now kind of like a beginning businesswoman and um, these other journeys that I didn't want to talk about necessarily because that's not what Stratajoy was about at that particular moment. It's kind of evolved into that a little more. Um, but 
I wanted that. I wanted that pain. I wanted people to be talking about how it felt to, you know, graduate top of your class and get that first job and get that first promotion and then all of a sudden feel lost because it's really scary. Like it's it's not a fun um, piece and normally you're not talking about it with your friends. Perhaps maybe you're bitching about your job and drinking too much wine. And you're not having a, <laughs> those real conversations, right? So. That's how it started was I was like, I want people who are really in the acute phase of this to be telling their version of it. Um, and luckily it cut on and it got to be seen as a privilege to write for Stratajoy. I get, you know, 70 applications and we narrow it down to seven. So it's very wow, cool. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. It's it's quite the... Um, Sounds like a lot of work too. <laughs> transition every season. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. And I, I don't love telling people no. That's not my favorite part. Um, but then I always feel really confident in the, the group that we do, you know, cause I'm trusting them with my business, but they're awesome. And I love this season. We have so many different stories going on. Awesome. Okay. So I think we may have, let's see. Hello. Hello. Um, there's someone on Skype, which I'm hoping is our second oh. panelist. Let's oh. see. Hello, you have no camera. <laughs> I can see you. I know. I can see myself. Wait, how come I can see myself? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, technical difficulties. We are having so much fun tonight. I was watching it from the other end. I was watching the live feed, so I couldn't get in. Okay, can you see me now? No. No. Molly, thank you so much for being patient with us tonight. We've had some interesting difficulties. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Well, because my, cause my, um, my camera is on, because I can see myself when I look at um, when I'm on the computer. Okay, I'm going to jump and play on chat. Let me know when we're... Where's the chat, though? Hmm. I think I just ended it, unfortunately, with her. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, anyway, Molly, I'm sorry. Um, So, we're talking about the season, The Bloggers, and how you've had um, a tremendous amount of interest in it. I'm going to call her back one more time. No worries. I can keep talking about anything. Everyone who knows me, I recognize lots of names in the Twitter chat. Hey, you guys, put some questions down. Yeah. We'll let Jen, we'll let Jen get sorted out, see if we can get this. Um, I I'm not sure how to pronounce your names. So you're going to have to learn. Um, but that means you guys get to ask me questions. So. Yeah, we actually have one question in from Erin of Well in L.A., who we've had on the show before, who's fantastic. I absolutely adore her. Uh, Molly, uh, she's asking you how uh, you do so much and have such a great social media presence. I'm curious about your experience with uh, regards to hiring your first employee? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that is a good question. Well, I have to say, I do not have a full-time employee. I do have a part-time employee. And uh, it came about um, Katie Callahan. She's awesome. Uh, she was uh, actually a blogger for me season two and didn't want to to leave. She's like, Molly, what can I do? I want to stay involved. So this is back two years two years ago now. Wow. And oh you blog. Um so she stayed on as a volunteer kind of editor for the new bloggers. She helped me um, edit posts and just make sure they were going live because that's a piece I'm actually not involved in at this point. And she did that for about a year before I was like, Katie, you're amazing. I don't want to lose you. Let's turn this into a um, <laughs> a paid relationship. She's like, oh, no, I love this. I'm like, no, no. There are so many things that I want you to do to help support this community. I would, I want to pay you. So we got that worked out, and, um, and we call her all sorts of names. Sometimes she's the community manager. Sometimes she's my assistant. She will help me with a wide range of things, but her main focus is for me, which are the things that uh, I felt it was taking up my time that I didn't need to be doing, right? That's kind of why you hire your first employee. It was blog editing for me. She's really that kind of the go-to person 
after we move through the process of selecting for that, she helps make sure I get newsletters out, um, doing maybe all the formatting and pieces, besides the piece that's in my voice, right, that I actually write. She gets that set up for me. She helps me load social media, like quotes and things. The rest of that, like if I reply to you, that's me replying. Um, but she'll do some of the more kind of bulk, you know, Joseph Campbell-y quotes and help me get that. And then she does a lot of special projects. Um, I'm getting my email list organized right now, which is a crazy process of people who took, you know, these specific groups or my one-on-one -on -one clients or you were a blogger or, you know, all the different ways that we are related so I can talk to them individually. So that's what she's working on right now. Um, and it's been great. She's in Philadelphia. Like, we're virtual. We get on the Skype every Monday, talk about projects. Um, answer questions. We've got an internal Yammer. I don't know if you guys use Yammer. Jen, do you use Yammer for anything? I don't use Yammer, but um, I mean, I use all of the Ovalai tools. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Jen, no, no, yeah. it's totally cool. It's it's fine. It's basically like an internal Twitter for those of you who don't know. So you can just invite people. Um, I, I have a, I have a team of volunteers who do different projects and Katie on there so we can kind of communicate on what's going on. So, um, all right. Yeah. Well, volunteers. Go ahead. That was, uh, some great information, especially for a lot of the solopreneurs that are out there that don't necessarily know when it's okay to get to that first employee part, um, and how to find that help. Cause I know a lot of you do need the help. There's only so many hours in the day and so many things we want to get done. Um, but now we have our second panelist in and hopefully I've got everything going up. She's up on, um, the TV behind us because unfortunately we had some issues with them um, <laughs> with all that you know Google hangout fun stuff so let me see if we can get the sound to work now are we good for sound oh, that's a good idea we can put you on mic too look you have your own little mic <laughs> oh I got her on TV okay good hopefully that'll work perfect so why don't you go um and now I'm gonna ask is it okay if I have you um, pronounce your name since yes. I didn't get to do the pre-interview yes. with you? Sure. All right. So hi, everyone. I'm Ade Jire Badanosi. I'm a sophomore at Boston College, and I'm currently pursuing a degree in international studies. However, throughout my years thus far, I've always just had this entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to take myself off of camera. So you're still on and good. Uh, so we've been talking a little bit about uh, just being a young female entrepreneur. Molly's talked about some of her programs. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about the nonprofit piece and why it is that you got into um, into creating your own, your own organization? Sure. So growing up, I lived right outside of Washington, D.C. So I worked a lot in politics and running for office. And I noticed there were a lot of women in positions of leadership in regards to politics. However, once I came to Boston, I realized that it wasn't just only in politics, it's pretty much across the board. And what I had reflected on growing up was that I remember one um, time I had reached out to this organization because I was really passionate about um, women in politics at the time. And they said, oh, that's really great, but you're only in high school. And I thought back to all the different opportunities I had growing up in regards to everything from playing sports to trying to learn an instrument. It takes practice to become really good at something. So the idea behind this program is to create, and this organization is to create an opportunity for high school girls and college women to be able to have that practice necessary so that way it'll become easier and easier for them to create their own initiatives. That's awesome. Now, okay, uh, going back into your talking about past experience in politics, can you actually detail that out? Because I thought I found um, there's a screenshot of the blog her, if you can pull that up, or not blog her, um, her campus. I found you on her campus, and you don't just have experience in politics. That was like your first part-time job. Essentially, yeah. I was, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I actually did a lot of um, elected office growing up. Like I was actually on the Howard County School Board um, back in high school, which was a really unique experience because I was only 16 at the time and I was at a table with people that were sometimes triple my age. So it was a really unique experience, um, especially, especially being a female um, in that type of industry, even though it is still education, for the most part, even within our school board, it was mostly male dominated. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. 
<laughs> I read that and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, most of us have um, little receptionist jobs, part-time stuff after school, and you were actually, you ran for this position. You were this full-on mini politician. <laughs> It was very interesting. I will tell you that. Yeah. I will tell you that that um, it was a really unique experience, and I really do value it because I was able to get a chance to know from the student perspective of actually being in the classroom Monday through Friday, and then I would go after school. I would go to the school board. So when they were talking about policy fifteen twenty or what have you, I actually would be able to say, "Oh, but this is how students actually feel about um, X, Y, and Z." That's awesome. And now you get to give it back to other young women. Fantastic. All right. So um, let's get into our first question as far as my panelists go. Can we get like a split screen of Molly up to? Ready? Ta-da. Okay. So the first question is um, the Nike um, viral video piece came out. I don't know if you guys got a chance to check that out. Um, or if any of you that are in the chat got a chance to check it out, was that um, the the director took all the money from Nike and basically went around the world and spent it all and made this video that was really kitschy, like um, uh, make it count. And it's all about taking big risks and reminding us to make every day count, do live life to the fullest. So my first question for both of you, and I'll start with Molly, um, is what have you done in the past, what are some examples of things, huge risks that you have taken that have really um, ex exemplified uh, living life to the fullest? Ooh, well, luckily I am a risk taker. Um, I enjoy that feeling of not knowing what's next. So I've got a couple, and people familiar with my story probably already know these. But when the you know crux of my quarter life crisis hit, I quit my job. Um, not knowing what was next, convinced my boyfriend to sell everything we owned and <laughs> travel around the world for a year. So his 10 days, multiply that by, we made it about 10 and a half months before we ran out of money and Ken's business was starting to suffer. He, he was running his own business during that time. I, on the other hand, was traveling, thinking, writing, and brainstorming what I was going to do next. That was kind of my Molly get your shit together time. So. <laughs> Um, that was a big risk that paid off. I mean, that's when Stratajoy was born. It wasn't called Stratajoy. It was called Company X for a very long time. Um, but that was, that was kind of the first one. I would say maybe a more recent one was when Ken and I got married a year and a half ago, whatever, August, a year and a half ago, we were feeling a little restless. We were both, um, you know, working our businesses and enjoying them, but wanted to take advantage of that kind of location independence piece. So for our honeymoon, again, we, we got rid of our, we didn't sell everything this time, we put some of it in storage, um, but left Seattle and jumped in our car and traveled around the States. And I taught workshops in lots of different cities and we met up with all sorts of people, mainly people I knew from online. Um, I had this crazy four month road trip, honeymoon, strategy tour and a lot of people were like, Molly, aren't you nervous about like losing clients? How are you going to work while you're on the road? And I just, you know, I'm going to, I'll figure it out. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing so I can have this piece of freedom in my life. So uh, I got sick of it for sure, but it was a great um, in between kind of the marriage and then moving down here to San Diego. So awesome. So a risk maybe that you are planning on taking, are you able to take us or tell us about any big goals that you have for the year and um, things that are really going to be pushing your limits other yeah. than having a baby? Give me birth? Yeah, I'm totally going like a la natural mama in the bathtub kind of birth. So I think that's going to be um, an experience. I'm not going to act like that's not going to be super painful, um, but... Have fun with that one. I'm taking, I'm taking hip, hypnosis classes. I'm good. Oh, good. That's smart. I know. I know I don't look like one of those, like, dreaded hippie girls, but at heart, I am. So well. we're doing that. Anyway, um, but yes, besides that piece, they're not really knowing what becoming a mother is going to do. Um, Jen, I know you know this for, you know, my business and kind of our life. I would say the next thing that feels really scary to me is that it's time to write a book. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. And that feels very <laughs> frightening. 
writing to me. Again, I don't identify as a writer necessarily. So that's a big stretch. Yeah, we had um, um, uh, Natalie McNeil of She Takes on the World uh, on mm-hmm. last week for the live stream, and she wrote her book. It took her a couple years before she actually got it out on paper and published. So I know it's it's a process, and it's good to have um, big goals like that. But I, I'd understand if you had the baby and wanted to just lay on the beach all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's part of me that thinks I might become – um, a maker of cheese and a lavender farmer and oh. not do anything online. That Basically, sounds like those are my, too. the opposite things of working online to me. That so. sounds good. So, we'll uh, Jire, um, did I say your name right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yay. All right, why don't you tell us, let me make sure that you're turned up okay and that everyone can hear you. Why don't you tell us a, about a big risk, a couple examples maybe about big risks that have really shown that you're living life to the fullest. I would say continuously, I love to cold call all the time. I mean, the worst someone can say is no. And what I've realized with all those different cold calls that I've done throughout my life thus far, they've always been an opportunity for me to either learn something about myself or potentially for someone to guide me in a direction um, that I never even thought of. For example... Um, Last year when I got here to BC, I randomly researched a professor that I thought was really interested in what I'm passionate about. So I emailed her and asked her if I could just sit down and speak with her. And from that meeting that I had um, last year, I was able to develop a relationship with her. And now um, I'm even proposing research um, that's looking at um, girls um, in Nigeria and comparing programs that work to empower them abroad so that's been another opportunity and just that was from an email just simple um even within um what i'm working on with my nonprofit, i would say some risks that i've taken have been um reaching out to mentors people that i don't know or organizations that i've never even worked with and it's been very useful for example um just last month we had a partner a seminar with Real Food Challenge, which is an excellent organization based in Boston, and we had no prior contact with them. And by reaching out to them, we were able to gain um, a relationship, and they were able to come in um, and present. So just from even reaching out to people without having any prior um, connections has been something I think I've continued. And also, um, I love, I guess you could say, rejection in a way. I mean, even going back to... um, high school, um, I remember I tried out for uh, the field hockey team, and I didn't make it, and the lacrosse team, and I didn't make it. I even ran for um, various student government positions, even before I ran for the school board, and lost every single one of them. And I kept taking risks, even greater and greater risks, even though I kept failing, and eventually one of them um, actually ended up working out. But even just taking things, even if it's reaching for the stars or what have you. I mean, you always land on the cloud, I guess you could say. So I always try and just, you know, take life as it is. And I mean, the worst someone can say is no, and then you can ask them. And the best piece of advice someone told me was, whenever you ask for something, or even if you're fundraising, instead of just saying, oh, can I have X? Also leave an option for the person. Like, if you can't help me, is there someone that you know that might be able to? And even just that kind of, opens it up and kind of creates the um, opportunity for a potential um, relationship in the future. Awesome. Now, any, any big goals that you have coming up in the next year? Any big risks that you're planning on taking? <laughs> Actually, one big risk is happening in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, I um, am planning a symposium called Taking Back the F Word, Um, feminism, and the idea is to bring together 100 college women and high school girls um, under the umbrella of just trying to reshape what feminism means um, in the 21st century by providing workshops as well as networking opportunities. So this is definitely a big risk, um, especially because um, attendees that will be coming are actually um, purchasing tickets. And through that, um, the ticket sales are actually using 100% of that to purchase uniforms for girls in Nigeria as a way to create more of a a cyclical effect and not just empowering yourself, but you're empowering someone else by your mere attendance. So this is definitely a humongous risk um, in the sense that it's not really up to um, our organization. It's a lot of just 
let, um, handing it out or what have you or relying a lot on other groups to try and make sure that it comes together. So this is definitely a big risk. And so, when, but it's really when is that? April 28th. April 28th and where? Um, it's going to be at Boston College. However, um, it's open to students um, as well as professionals from across the city of Boston, um, women and um, high school girls, just to bring them together because I feel like what I noticed as well and people that are um, working on organizing this is that there's stuff going on at Boston College, but then there's awesome stuff going on down the street at Boston University, um, across the river at MIT, and no one's actually interacting with one another. And imagine what would happen if these women um, from all these different college campuses, as well as even in the city, started connecting more um, with another with one another, then perhaps we would even be able to achieve more um, than we even thought of or dreamt of. Very nice. Now, um, I totally just forgot what I was going to ask you. But we do have <laughs> we have a question. I'm trying to keep all these things in my little brain. Um, <laughs> but Morgan had a really good question a while back as far as when... Uh, when you have a project, when it is, and Morgan, I apologize if I'm totally butchering your question, but it was back there a ways, but it's something like along the lines of uh, when do you know to let go of a project? What What is that point where you're just like, okay, this is this has gone far enough and moved on to maybe the next project or um, just gave up altogether and went and got a job? <laughs> Molly, that maybe. May oh, that definitely happens a lot. I say what what always drives me to a project is some kind of like spark or passion because otherwise it, it could get really, really daunting if you have to have that inner passion. So what I realized when I need to like move on, for example, when I worked a lot with like internet safety and things like that, I just started to notice that there were, first of all, like other, um, by the, the project that I had started, there were other solutions that were created. So perhaps maybe because that wasn't so much like a business venture, um, it, um, the actual like solutions were being implemented. Like what I had been working on had actually been um, created, like created an actual like solution within my community. Whereas, for example, with now with a nonprofit organization, now it's a little bit different. So, for example, if for if we actually reach like our vision of having high school girls and college women around the entire country become more um, involved in um, empowering each other and what have you, then perhaps I would step back or perhaps if um, something else were to spark my interest. But as long as I'm passionate about something that I really, it's hard for me to let go, which I will tell you like completely to be honest. But um, I usually, I, it's usually a passion thing. Like if my passion is starting to die out for something, then I know it's time to leave. Very I hope nice. that answers the question. No, that was a that was a great answer. So why don't I turn it over to Molly and hear what? Cause Molly, you have um, little mini projects, I guess, within your larger business. Maybe talk about what goes into that um, as far as because you're more of a venture, you know, for profit, all that fun stuff. And then we'll go back to maybe a social entrepreneurship topic in just a second. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Morgan, I think the question was, yeah, when do you know when to keep pushing on a project, and when is it just time to quit? Nice. And I Thank really you. think it depends at the beginning what, you know, what is success in that project for you? There's some things I do because I simply want to do them, right? I feel a strong drive. It's um, like Jerry said, like a passionate piece of like, I want to go on this uh, road trip around the United States. I want to launch this product about, you know, journal prompts because journaling has been such a big piece of my life. Sometimes it's just to get it done, right? They're not proving anything. I think the failure piece or like the piece of how do I know to keep pushing? If you're not getting anything back, right? If you set up measures like I want to make this amount of money or I want to get this amount of um, people recognizing me for my work or I want it to fe feel a certain way and it's not, then you move on. It's not working. Yeah, I don't know what that point is exactly for you, Morgan, but for me, it's like, is this, is the pain worth the pleasure that's coming down the road? And if I honestly can't see it, I'm, it's over. It's done. Let's pull the plug. And I have no problem admitting, yeah, that failed. We tried. It didn't work. Let's, let's do something new. 
sometimes the question I ask myself, and I'll end with this, is will I regret not doing it? And if I can't say that I will, then it's over. Do you give yourself any type of end date where you say, if I don't achieve this by X date, then um, then it, it'll be the time to drop the ball? Or do you kind of leave it open? Um, you know, a lot of the things that I create in my projects within my business, I, if it was really up to me, I would probably quit a lot of them. But because <laughs> they put them out to the public, right? Because you get to that point where like, this is so hard. So many things are going wrong. Um, for me, I think the thing that helped can Continue, like a lot of my product launches, like we hit that point where it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe how much work this is. Like, is this really going to be worth it? Um, but I have a little mantra that I use to get myself through it is I hold strong intentions and I release expectations. So no, there's not really an end piece for me because I can't control a lot of like external measures. Oh, how many courses did I sell? What money, you know, did I make? Which bloggers talked about my product? I can't control that piece, right? It has nothing to do with me. I, all I can do is my strong intentions and working as hard as, you know, I want to be proud of what I'm putting out into the world. So, no, mine are much more internal check-ins with myself. So, I control what I can, and then I release control. Yeah, say that one more time. You hold strong intentions and release and expectations. Release expectations. That's a good one. I like that. And for Morgan, if you're watching... I bought Molly's thing today. <laughs> um, I recommend checking it out. I'll have the links over at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com tomorrow, but it's just strategy.com and I'm sure you're seeing the lower third too. Um, but she does so what have... Did you, what did you buy? What were you waving at? Was that the magical bought, year download? Yeah, the magical year. It's only $20 and it's got a <laughs> bunch of great interviews and there's some really cute questions. I don't want to say cute, but fun questions, I guess, and... Things that I just, if it's April and I feel like the year is going by really fast, so I'm excited to look through it. Um, but anyway, uh, so I, let's jump to the question. Um, what was the question that we were asking? <laughs> I swear. <laughs> uh, we were asking, um, that was a question to Molly about projects. Let's go ahead and move on. Ladies that are watching, I apologize. I'm not normally like this, but I do have a 20-month-old and a hosting business, and this has just been a really crazy day. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, the next question that I want to ask was on social entrepreneurship. Okay, so going back to um, Jire, uh, if you can tell us a little bit about why you chose to do the nonprofit versus the social entrepreneurship route. We had... Um, uh, a woman on earlier in the in the month in March, I believe it was, who does um, necklaces, and she doesn't give donate the money over to Africa, but basically gives um, hires people and gives people work based off of this business. And so, social entrepreneurship is a big hot topic right now, especially with young people. So, why nonprofit versus the for profit social social um, piece? Um, so our reasoning was because we just wanted to provide a service to people that we thought were in of the highest need in the sense that all of the girls that are part of our found turf program are actually um, from lower income areas in Boston. And we couldn't figure out a way to potentially like profit off of that. So that's the reason why it's a nonprofit because all of the program fees, um, all the different generation costs, we um, accumulate them. However, with the symposium, we were trying to have a little bit of a social entrepreneurship and kind of um, hybrid model in the sense that by coming to the symposium, you pay um, $10. However, 100% of that money actually goes to purchase uniforms for girls um, in Nigeria as a way to help state local economy there because they have textile firms. However, they're usually underutilized and there's a high need of um, actually um, getting girls into primary school. So by utilizing um, the need on the ground there, we're able to um, have somewhat of a little bit of like a social entrepreneur's impact, but we're still not profiting in that sense. It's interesting. Um, I always wonder why one company goes for profit versus the nonprofit route. So, 
my next question for both of you then is more so on the fun, cutesy side of young female entrepreneurs. We like to ask questions about, you know, the how to's, the building blocks of building a business. But on the other side, uh, there's there's a reason why we all come together and like to chat with one another. It's that we're going through similar life experiences, right? Molly's having a baby. Jerry, you're in college. So there's different, definitely different things that um, are going on for us versus our male counterparts or our, um, even women that are older. I partner with my mother in business, and we have very different day-to-days. So I want to hear from you. What exactly does your day today look like? When you wake up in the morning, what happens to when you go to bed? You don't have to go into crazy detail or anything like that, but <laughs> uh, maybe tell us a little bit about what it looks like. I'll start with Jerry since you, um, Molly, Jerry can't hear you. I'm really sorry about that. Again, technical difficulties, all sorts of fun stuff. So Jerry, why don't you go ahead and get started? Sure. So it's funny that you asked that because this, the past 24 hours have actually been the most not traditional for me. Um, is that a really big paper due this morning? So I did stay up really late. <laughs> also known as an all-nighter. However, um, nice a typical bones. day usually um, would ensue, like, they try to get up and do, like, some kind of, like, meditation exercise. Um, and then if I can, like, go to like, yoga or do, like, a little, like, a run uh, just to get uh, my day going. Because I know that whenever I do exercise, the more I tend to be more productive um, with my day. Um, and then usually I, I go to class, obviously. Um, and then besides that, I always have this like internal battle, like to make sure that I'm spending as much time on my homework as I am on like my other projects. So I have to um, prioritize my time and even like police myself in the sense that I'm making sure that I spend enough time on my homework. Uh, but, th- but then outside of work and school and all that stuff, I definitely do love um, to take advantage of like the city of Austin and hang out with my friends or what have you and we do like different things like even risks talk about risks uh, about two weeks ago we went to this event called um beast mass which is really really interesting it, it happened all over um the country but essentially you have an idea you present it to a group of community members that come and donate as much as they can um and have like a communal meal and we do just different things like that um, around the city of Boston. My day to day. Well, that's fun. I miss college. That's fun. <laughs> Actually, this weekend is Marathon Monday. What's Marathon um, Monday? Um, it's in Boston. Apparently, I've never heard of this holiday before coming here, but it's called Patriot Day, and um. Essentially, we don't have school, and the Boston Marathon runs past campus. So, um, a few of my friends are running it this year. So, I'm actually going to run with them from school to like the finish line. So that's good. Sounds like fun. So, um, very serious girl, but likes to have fun and takes care of herself, which is kind of the the running theme of all of the people that we've had on Young Female Entrepreneurs is really that they take care of themselves, they like to have fun, and they are very serious about um, fulfilling their mission in life, which is really nice. I think it's um, it's a good it's good role models, um, it's being a good role model for other young women. So, Molly, I want to kick the question over to you. What does the day to day grind look like for the owner of Stratajoy dot com? <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Uh, it's it's really shifted over the course of my business, but I will give you what my day looks like right now. At well, however far am I? Eight months pregnant. Um, one of the things that's different for me is that my husband and I have, for the last several years, both been entrepreneurs, and he's working in a more traditional. He goes he goes to work. He has employees. Um, you know, kind of the long days, and I'm in a new city or fairly new. Right, I've only been down here eight months. So that means I've been working a lot and I'm working from home right now. So we'll wake up without an alarm clock, which is awesome. Um, early, like, I don't know, six early for us, six forty ish, put on my pajamas or my walking clothes, whatever fits these days and go for a walk pretty much every single day. Um, that plus some prenatal yoga is kind of the extent of my exercise right now. So go for a long walk and we'll go to our coffee shop where some of the you know people in in San Diego who know me and we'll drink our decaf coffee and talk about plans and business and life. 
Um, and then get home and sorry, someone's on my door. Uh, <laughs> I I work in projects, so, so my days my days sometimes I'll go and run a bunch of errands and do nothing, have nothing to do with work. Normally I coach maybe a call or two throughout the day, and then I normally have a group at night, like kind of in the four to six o'clock. So those are the things I have to be present for. The rest is really what I want to give my time to. Um, writing prompts, creating products. Uh, I keep crazy to-do lists. This is my to-do list always from Tuesday. Oh, that's so pretty. But I like to yeah. make them special. I say like, marvelous Monday, terrific Tuesday. I try to cheer myself up. Yay. But that's kind of sad that Tuesdays is, is still not done. <laughs> um, and I have, a, I'm very organized, but pretty, like I have pretty folders over here and I just, I just tackle projects that I, I can't give you any better. Sometimes I work in my pajamas. Sometimes I feel better if I get dressed and obviously do my hair when I'm going to be on a Skype video. I try to get outside because I live in San Diego. So lunch is always on my porch. Um, reading books mainly. I love to read. And now all of a sudden, authors are sending me their books to, like, review, which is oh, so fun. I know. I got on, like, some list or something. I don't know. So I've got, got lots of cool stuff coming in. But, I mean, honestly, I try to at least have some interaction every day, which a lot of the times that means it's a Skype, like, colleague connection call. I know we talked about how relationships are, like, vitally important well they are and I try to keep up both my Seattle connections and my other kind of online colleague collections connections through um through Skype calls because I don't have as many in-person friends here okay so Molly I have to ask are you yes. somebody that does the Ugg boot in their pajamas through the rest the whole day or are you one of those women that has to get dressed and put on their makeup every morning in order to be oh, productive no, no, no. I literally didn't shower until like four o'clock because I knew I had to be on this so no, I'm perfectly fine working in my sports bra and my pajama pants. Oh, that's so funny. Um, yeah, that doesn't bother me. I get pretty focused, um, and sometimes I don't. And if I'm having one of those days where I'm like, this is a crap day, I don't force myself to work. That's one of the cool pieces, right? There, there's nothing that is so vital. Like, no one's going to die if I don't answer email. So I'll go run my errands. I'll go to Target. I'll, you know, I'm working on, obviously, the nursery. They've got a bunch of birthing stuff going on right now. Um, tomorrow... I'm going to go to my doctor's. I'm going to go eat a smoothie at my favorite restaurant. I'm going to go buy a new dress because I'm outgrowing maternity clothes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go buy a stroller. Like, that's my day. That's what I have scheduled in my calendar. So That sounds pretty good to me because right? I own a business and it doesn't sound like that. But that's the nice thing about entrepreneurship is that you can make it whatever it is that you want to make it. And I'm sorry, but Molly – is the smart one in this situation because she's able to just add she delegates her blog posts and guess what strategy.com is still fantastic you win awards for that you're still doing your job you don't have to be physically in the office so i have my last question for both of you and then i'll let you go because i know we got started late and everything so i thank you so much everyone that's still watching and to molly and jire about um the technical difficulties um, but my question is, Sheryl Sandberg of the CEO of Facebook, she last week came out and um, I believe it was Makers that did a full series on her and um, different things that have happened in her life and things that she um, holds valuable. Um, but she said at 5.30, I leave the office and I write emails late at night so people know that I'm working. In the morning, I wake up and write emails and I want people to know that it's okay and go be, to go home and be with your family. Um, I wanted to hear both of your thoughts on that. Um, I'll go ahead and start with Molly since you're up on the screen right now. Yeah, um, what I found funny about that little video and I saw like a longer description of it too is that for so long she tried to hide that fact that she was going home to be with her family. You know, she's a very powerful woman. Uh, I am in full support of it. Not the sending emails late at night and early in the morning, which sounds like it's what she used to do, and now she's just really owning this fact that she goes home at 5.30. Uh, I hear this a lot in clients that I work with, that you know, someone has this expectation of them, and they feel like they must do it, whether they agree with it or not. And I understand, you know, the boss dynamic. But there is... There is power in, in owning your own choice and saying, this is what is right for me and this is why it's right. Obviously for her, it's to leave at 5.30 and go spend time with her kids. 
I'm a big fan of that. Um, I'm sure it's much harder for her than for me. She's got a huge billion dollar company that she has to report to and I'm just in charge of myself. Um, but I try to honor that, right? You know what? What's important to me besides my business? And it's one of the things that I've been very aware of since the beginning. I met a lot of entrepreneurs in Seattle, Jen, you not included, who were you know older and didn't have kids and said, oh my God, there's no way that you could have kids and run a business. Like I just simply couldn't do what I do. I'm like, well, what do you mean? They're like, oh, I stay up until two o'clock, you know, answering emails. And I remember telling myself at that very point, I will not run my business that way. If it gets to that, it is no longer my business. That's not, that's not what I want. I don't want to craft a business that requires me to give up my life. So I think that's a great example for young women because that is really what we hear day in and day out is that entrepreneurship is all about working hard, working really long hours. And there's something to be said about being smart and just uh, building your business around your lifestyle and that, that that it is possible. It's not always pretty, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll work till two. Um, but, you know, and perhaps I'm giving up some rewards that people who are working around the clock are getting. But I don't care because that's not my definition of success. It's just, it just isn't. Very nice. So did Jerry... Um, and I think I just want to pronounce your name. Um, but I wanted to hear the college, the college side of it. So you haven't even entered into the work, the workforce, had that experience yet. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that you think, or what your opinion is on the Sheryl Sandberg leaving at five thirty piece? Sure. I mean, to be honest, um, growing up, my mom always worked. Um, like a full-time like 40 hour a week traditional nine to five job and I honestly noticed how much she really did want to be at home um so she would always try and come home and like but then she would always still like even now to this day um like we always say like mom like you can put away like your your iphone and like to email or what have you but even with talking with my friends I feel like people nowadays are more um interested in trying to have a career and also trying to um, seem like they are on top of their game, I guess, in a way. So, I mean, from my conversations with a lot of my friends, I mean, I know I have some that say, oh, that um, they would rather be um, at home, I guess you could say, or oh, then there's the majority that are like, oh, but I'd rather um, have a career or what have you. But I feel like a lot of people to this day, I mean, even people that are parents have that constant debate or of like, oh, like what is like the perfect like balance? Like should you leave work at exactly 5.30 and then continue on when you get home or should you just stay longer? It's, I feel like it's a really difficult question. I mean, I don't even have, I definitely don't have the answer, but I would <laughs> say that it should be something, I guess, like the individual, I guess, person. I mean, knowing a little bit about Stress Sandberg from like reading some of the stuff that she does and I love that TED talk have to shamelessly plug that one it's a great one mm -hmm. um I just think the lessons I've learned from what she says I guess is more just to do what's best for you like your fit I think I don't know what my fit is yet to be honest but <laughs> well you don't have to so uh, let me ask you this after college are you planning on um going into the corporate world do you plan on getting a job do you plan on sticking with your nonprofit? what does that look like sure. Sure. Hopefully I will not be in corporate America. <laughs> I would rather have an opportunity to um, create something or innovate. I'm also interested in like for profit and more so like um, mixing community, mis mixed income communities into the developing world because of that large income gap. So that's one of my other passions. Um, so working in something like that and reconciling um, my interest in um, the nonprofit world would be amazing as an actor um, college job per se, but I definitely don't think I would be best suited given like my personality and the way that I, I learn and the way that I like to be productive, that I would be really conducive in the traditional, um, corporate America structure. It's interesting. I don't think you're alone in college grads right now that they're not necessarily interested in doing the nine to five route. Seth Godin has spoken on this a few times in that, we're going towards a more project-based um, employment um, model. 
but unfortunately, the healthcare system and um, the tax system don't really reflect those needs or you know give the support that we need for that so i think that's you bring up a great point if you're in college watching this right now um i'd love to hear if you're interested in going to the nine to five right route or if you feel like you need to do that in order to have health care and benefits and all that fun stuff um it's, see it's complicated because what i've noticed from like even just talking with my friends this is a new interest area for me especially with the whole um big thing about entrepreneurship especially like around here in Cambridge and all that stuff is different colleges are trying to come around to that idea of entrepreneurship it's interesting because there's just some students that are that are trying to um break from that traditional mold but then there are some students that are still willing to like fulfill that nine to five however what I do notice the similarities between both of those different types of people um at least from like conversations with um my friends is that it's more so about security, not necessarily mm -hmm. uh, about what they actually want to do. And it makes me wonder, I mean, because I know, like, for example, investment banking, that's like the typical, you know, like corporate job, I guess you could say. Um, they have a really high t turnover rate. Like literally every single one of my friends that's like an investment banker is not an investment banker anymore if they started it last year. Like, so my question is just why people are <laughs> I mean, I, 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 cause I, going, I mean, I will have student loans, obviously, when I graduate from here, but this is probably one of the most free times of our lives, even though we still have those loans kind of in the back of our minds, but I don't understand. I don't, but no, I, I guess teach them. It brings up a lot of good questions for those that are in college and those that aren't in college, like April was saying um, that she went the corporate route for the money and the insurance and the security that all that brings that when you go on um, on your own, you're not necessarily guaranteed a salary for the first three years. I mean, you're never guaranteed a salary, but today we're, I mean, if you go the nine to five route, you're not guaranteed a job for much longer than a few months, really. You could get laid off, you never know. But anyway, uh, so popping the question over to Molly, uh, you talked about having a baby and <laughs> having a baby and possibly writing a book. Is Stratajoy going to be growing? Do you have plans to bring on a larger team in like the next couple years? What What does your future hold? Well, when you send over the questions to brainstorm, um, you know, that we might be touching on, I tried to start brainstorming what Stratajoy, I can't tell if this is hitting, what Stratajoy was going to become in five years. Yeah, basically I ended up with, I have no idea. <laughs> but I know I will figure it out when it's time. I have complete and utter trust in myself. Um, and in Stratajoy, that will kind of point the way. Uh, a couple of ideas that I jotted down for, I know there's lots of uh, inner tribe people listening. One, I can see it just becoming more of what it is, which is kind of like a media empire, right? Someone once called me, you're like the young white Oprah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to be. And give me my billions. No. Um, so just, you know, a place of inspiration, action, and community. Me at the helm, lots of people contributing to that. Right? We kind of got the quarter life. The mamas are coming on. Maybe that will need a new entrepreneur piece as well. All the things I'm interested in. World travel. Maybe we'll do a traveling piece. I don't know. Uh, that is an idea. Another is I will get completely sick of um, running a big community, even though I think I love it. I mean, I'm a connector at heart, so I can see going just the very much author, like speaker route. I can see it turning a little more corporate. One of my like, personal um, interests in research is the companies that are using happiness as a measure of the health of their company as well as profit. So kind of the whole positive psychology side of of the workplace. Because yes, although maybe those you know young female entrepreneurs here in the call. Uh, we're a, a small slice of the pie. Most people have jobs, right? They're working for corporations in some way, shape, or form. So how do you make that experience better for both them individually um, and companies at a whole? Sean Anker, if anyone else is interested in this, is doing fascinating both research and then application of this um, in the corporate world. So I can see it going that way. And then I did write down, give it all up and move to Italy to cook and garden and learn Italian. <laughs> and write poetry. So, question mark, I don't know. 
<laughs> nice. I like the, the the variations within your plan. Um, so really fast. Yes. Jure, are you are you dating? Are you married? Are you single? I'm single. <laughs> There's a big joke around here on campus. Oh, because BC is generally known as like a hookup culture, I guess you could say. <laughs> but unfortunately, I am single. Okay, are you dating or? I am not time? dating right now. Because you don't have time. Do you mind if I ask? Uh, did you? No, because no, you don't no. have time. You you just haven't met someone. I think I just haven't met someone. To be honest with you, I mean I do because I always try and prioritize time. But I always, I mean, I always hate that that um that idea. Oh, I'm so busy or what have you. Because in reality, we will always be busy. And it's probably going to get worse as we get older. So I always try and make time, but. I'm not dating anyone right now. Do you think that that's a, been a benefit within building up your um, your nonprofit? Or I would say so, and getting to know more about myself, especially here in college, um, mainly because I feel like every decision that I make, as selfish as this sounds, is more of like um, in regards to like my schoolwork, or if I want to study abroad, or if I'm going to do this during the summer. Like I don't have to think about someone else's like. Um, like feelings or like, like their Rory thoughts. Gilmore. <laughs> exactly. So essentially, like I'm able to like just do whatever I'd like. However, then there are those other days, like for example, like oh, like holidays, for example, like but um, maybe hopefully in due time. Someone will come my way. Well, I don't want to, I don't mean to like put the pressure on you. Go get a boyfriend. <laughs> so, I just wanted to know. I think it's an interesting question when you bring uh, someone else into the mix of the business. Now, Molly, you have a husband, but before you guys got married, you were actually dating him when you created Strategy. Do you feel like his entrepreneurial background has benefited you in any way in starting the business or having. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's no way I would have done this without his example. I, my family, my dad is a doctor, my mom is a teacher, right? Very kind of traditional, um, educational-based, educational, also I make words up, uh, based roles. And without Ken's support in so many ways, there, no, there's no way I would have been doing this. Um, he was kind of the one who like sparked the idea. And then when we talked about what we wanted our life to look like, it was very clear that working for ourselves and having that flexibility to do all sorts of things was, you know, one of our top priorities. And he also, I have to give him a shout out, named Stratajoy. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. And he's a marketing guy and a sales guy. So he helps with, um, I always like to come up with like my own ideas, but then once I get them developed in my own head, then I'll run them by about him. It's so funny because that is, I mean, this is a question that I ask most people that are on the live stream or in Twitter chats or whatever it is that we're doing because most people say that their husbands um, either perform some form of IT function for them, they have some form of marketing background, there's always something that they ping off of it, whereas the single girls all say that it's beneficial that they don't have anyone because they're able to spend more time on their business and really figure things out. And like Jerry was saying, they don't have those ties so they can make decisions without having to think about the other person. Uh, there's just so many interesting different ways to put it, but that relationship piece I think is a big thing. Like Natalie was saying last uh, last week was that her boyfriend is a huge support system for her, her and if she didn't have him, that she probably wouldn't be where she is today. Um, so we're not man haters here at YFE. <laughs> I met with people. Well, I, I met people uh, with people from Tajikistan a month or so ago, and the men in the room it was mainly men and like one woman, and they were like, "So does YFE hate men?" <laughs> that was their big thing. I was like, "No, no. we don't." But anyway, um, I'm totally getting off on a tangent, and I asked you guys like three last questions, so I should probably let you go. <laughs> but thank you so much for being on. Um, Jerry, why don't you tell us one more time about that event that you have coming up before we get sure. closing off. So if you're in or know someone around the Boston area, I definitely encourage you all to come out. Um, the event is called Taking Back the F Word Feminism Symposium. If you go to our website, thinkandactnow.org. There's a specific page where you can find out more information um, about registering um, as well. And so I definitely encourage you all to come April 28th. Awesome. I'm expecting to see really big things from you after you get out of college too. I think your story is awesome and you're doing such incredible things already. So Molly, um, 
Again, you guys, I got this, the the plan, and you can get on it, too. Um, it's really fun, and it's cute. So, Molly, um, tell us where people can find all of your information. Uh, yes, it's stratajoy.com, which is strategies for joy. It looks just like strategy, but joy. I love um, it. And I'm Stratajoy all over the internet. So Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Google Plus, Vimeo. I've got a bunch of the videos up on Vimeo. Um, and I love to connect. As you can see, I've been chatting away during our chat with, with all of you guys. So make sure you shout out at me if you find me on Twitter so I know who you are. Tell me we were on this chat together. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, both of you gave such incredible insights in what it looks like to be young, female, and entrepreneurial. And so next Thursday, like I mentioned at the very beginning, we're doing the live stream at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. P- um, what's that other side of the country called? <laughs> Eastern. Oh, my gosh. East Coast. <laughs> East Coast. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully we'll see everyone back next Thursday for the show. Um, tell your friends about it. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Molly. Do you every Everyone, um, head to youngfemalentrepreneurs.com tomorrow for the replay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Dan.